Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part four, the final part in my fountain series. And this video, we're going to go ahead and finish up the details on the fountain and add the water and also add the flowers and the final leaves and branches to our painting. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paints, canvas, and brushes that I use. The app that I'm using is Infinite Painter for Android. And here we're going to go ahead and work a little bit more on the bottom of the basin. And I'm just kind of adding a little bit of some texture to the bottom of the basin with a lighter um, gray color. And then I wanted to go ahead and start working on the water. And one of the things that makes a fountain stand out is contrast. So you need to make sure that you have a dark layer or underpainting to your water first. So I'm adding sort of a dark blue color or dark gray. You can use ultramarine blue if you're following along traditionally and add some burnt sienna to it. And then you would go over it with a dry brush technique, which means that you don't put a lot of paint on the bottom layer. You want to let the um, dark color shine through a little bit. And so here I'm trying to work on it and make sure that I don't kill all the dark color. And I'm using the Pollock brush, the dry brush, um, old oil, just something that will give me a painterly look that doesn't cover all of the <clears throat> um, dark color there. And I'm doing this on a separate layer so that I can go back and erase this a little bit. And if you're doing this traditionally, just try to get it right the first time. Um, but if you have to wipe it off, then wipe it off quickly with a dry paper towel. So here I'm just trying to let some of the dark shine through and and let the um, the bottom part of the the underpainting and the layer um, show through a little bit and not use a lot of white for the water because you start to lose the shape of your fountain and so you don't want to do that and I'm trying to use um, some of the splattery brushes from infinite painter and if you're following along traditionally use your paint you can use your um, bristle brush and you can use a flat brush but just make sure that you don't put a lot of paint there and make sure that um, all the lines are broken that the water uh, flowing out of the basin is kind of in broken lines and in splatters and you can use an old toothbrush and just flick a splatter on your uh, fountain right there. And then I'm working a little bit more on the basin and fine fine tuning the the edges that are on the the basin there and adding a little bit of more of a highlight there. And if you notice I've let some of the trees in the background um, show through where the water is so that you can tell that it's water flowing over a fountain and not just a big white blob. And that's the problem with a lot of painters is they will kill their fountain off because they add too much water and you can't see the, the fountain then. And here I wanted to add some highlights to the leaves. Uh, in my photo reference, there's light shining through those leaves. So I'm using sort of a, a phthalo yellow green color for the leaves. And you can use one of the, one of the legacy brushes here you can use the Pollock brush or or one of the um, uh, other ones the what do you call those watercolor the watercolor set <clears throat> or the Lorraine brush just one of those that'll give you kind of a leaves texture and then I went ahead and saved you have to go ahead and save your 
your uh, stage, each stage, and then I wanted to go ahead and add some flowers to the brush that's around the bottom of the fountain. So I added some yellow flowers and some salmon color flowers and a little bit of some purples, just something that will complement the dark green color. So you want kind of reddish colors. And so you can use your bristle brush for this or the Pollock brush, just kind of a splatter brush there. And then I'm adding a little bit of some dark green to show the shadows under the clumps of the, of the different flowers there. And I just wanted to go ahead and, and feather it out towards the edge of the fountain to keep with the vignette style that I'm doing there. And then I added some more flowers, just a, a little bit more uh, salmon color and some pinks and purples. And then I wanted to go ahead and refine the tree a little bit more. So I'm adding white acrylic gesso with a touch of orange, cadmium orange. And then go ahead and blend that in a little bit. And I'm using the Velocity Splatter brush there just to kind of give it a a rough look so that it'll show the bark but it'll be like it's catching the edge of the light on our light source is coming from the left side so i just wanted to go ahead and add that a little bit on the tree and and smudge it in and if you're doing this traditionally you can use a paper towel or you can use your finger to smudge it in and then i'm adding a little bit of some dark spots on the the bark you can use burnt umber just something to give it a dark um, shadow on the shadowed side there. And here I was working on the texture and trying to get sort of a, a textured look. And you can go in there and, and change the different textures on your uh, painting there. And so I just wanted to kind of see if I could uh, get a different um, look there like a like a watercolor paper and then I wanted to go ahead and work on the vignette but that just didn't work because it 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 looked too different from the back the textured background so I just went ahead and and kind of left that alone uh, because it, it just wasn't working so you you have to kind of do that at the beginning of your painting just get the the edges how you want them at the at the beginning of the painting because otherwise it it paints over the texture look there and then I'm working a little bit more on the tree and trying to get a um a, a little bit more of the light on the edge of the tree and let it shine through and then I wanted to go ahead and work a little bit more on the the edges of the painting and I had um, I went ahead and signed it but as you know whenever I sign something that doesn't mean that it's the end of the painting so I went ahead and worked a little bit more on the shape of the tree there and just uh, worked a little bit more on on trying to get some more highlights on it and uh, I just looked around and and decided what exactly I wanted to change there and I I was able to smudge a little bit on the edges of the painting I just wanted to give it more of a unfinished look just because I, I like the vignette style now if you don't like that you don't have to add that but I just think that the vignette style is kind of neat so I wanted to give it the edge is kind of an unfinished look and, and look like they have brush strokes um, pulling the paint out there. And then I wanted to go ahead and just kind of check around and, and see what else to, to put on here. Um, I wanted to refine the branches a little bit, the thin twiggy branches. You want to go ahead and use your uh, script brush to do that and just add a little bit of some uh, dark paint to to finish out the the thin 
twigs that come in from the painting on the top and um, you just want to step back at this point and kind of study your picture and see what you want to add there and, and try not to add any big changes or anything because you've got it looking pretty good so I was just kind of working on some of the shadows and the fountain making the <coughs> fountain stand out just a little bit more and adding a little bit more to the shadows at the bottom of the fountain Oop. I had to stop and cough there. Sorry about that. I get allergies in my, <clears throat> get a tickle in my throat, and I have to stop and cough. So, anyway, maybe I can talk enough to get the rest of this finished. <clears throat> but I'm just trying to work on the the little details of the fountain. Just add a few more dark um, colors to the bottom of it to try to give it a little bit more of a a refining look there and now I'm stepping back or this is the equivalent of stepping back and and looking and seeing what else I want to do and I wanted to add a little bit more leaves to the top of the vignette there and try to get a little bit more of some of that um, stuff done and then I went ahead and decided I better stop fooling with it or I'll mess it up so I called it good and finished it so this is the end of my fountain lesson and I have a whole bunch more lessons recorded that I need to get up and so if you want to see what those are then stay tuned and hit that subscribe button thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later